What's up, it's Austin Rutherford. Uh, today we're talking about how to build a buyer's list, how to find buyers for your deals. As you know, half of the problem in real estate is finding the deal and the other half is finding the buyer. Without one or either of them, there is no deal. So people spend so much time focusing on the deal, which is important, but they lack spending time on the buyer, which is even more important. Uh, so we're gonna break down exactly how to build your buyer's list um, here today on this video. Uh, but first, if you like this content, if it added any value, hit that like button below. Um, if you want us to get this content, anything in the future that we drop, hit that subscribe button below, that red button below. Um, if you got any questions or you need any clarification on anything, uh, drop a comment below. Let me know um, and I promise I'll respond to you. Today we're talking about how to build a buyer's list, how to do that. There's, a, there's six ways you can build a buyer's list. There's a lot more than six ways, but we're gonna go over six ways on how to build a buyer's list right now. We're gonna give you a few examples real life here on the screen so you can see exactly how we do it. But first, uh, the biggest one that we've had success with is Facebook. So going on to Facebook and joining real estate groups um, in your area is a great way to find and network with buyers. So people post deals on Facebook and then people comment under them that they're interested in. But what you need to do is you need to go in there and respond to each of those people and say, hey, I saw you were interested in the property 123 East Main Street. Um, you know, if you have a deal, say, hey, are you interested in a property in this area? If you do not have a deal and you're just trying to build the buyers list, um, you can just reach out to them and say, hey, you know, I know that you responded to this property. What's a good email address? I got an opportunity coming down the pipeline that I want to get over to you. Then you'll get their email address and then you can reach out to them in the future. The biggest thing with all these is you want to build your email address um, list because it's really, really easy to sell something when you can just send an email to a thousand people that all want to buy your deal instead of calling a thousand people and, or one person. So you, when you build a list, you wanna build an email list. When you build a buyer's list, you wanna build an email list. So reach out to people on Facebook and go through all the previous posts as well. There's probably a lot of email addresses in there, but message these people, introduce yourself. Say, hey, I, I know you're looking at a property 123 East Main Street, um, but I wanted to see you know, if you are interested in another opportunity like this, if you have one, or I have other opportunities coming down the pipeline, can I send you the next deal that we get and get their email address. So Facebook, tremendous way to get deals. Secondly is cold calling. So you're actually gonna have to go out and cold call people. You're gonna have to call people that have bought houses in that area and ask them if they're continuing to buy. If they bought a house, that's a great buyer because they've proven that they can actually buy a house. So we're actually gonna get into the screen right here um, and show you how we find people to call and ask if they have any interest. So we're gonna jump in here on redfin.com and I'll go to redfin.com, so R-E-D-F-I-N.com, and then you type in the address, you know, whatever property address you're, uh, you're looking at, whatever property address somebody's calling you about. So type in 753 Seymour Avenue. Uh, we're just using this as an example. So this is a piece of land, but this works across the board for all types of properties. So uh, if you scroll down to here, it's a map, and it says map nearby homes for sale. You want to click that button, and then you want to hit the more filters button at the top, change from for sale to sold and you want to go six to 12 months back so six we're going six months on this but you can go 12 months back and click update and then these little blue bubbles are uh, our properties uh, that have sold close to yours so you're on seymour ave so your house is right here so all these houses are houses around that have sold so if you look you got 300,000, 200,000, uh, 104,000, 140,000, 300,000. So those are fixed up houses. But if you look at the lower houses, which are like 40, 50, $60,000, those are probably houses that needed a lot of work. So if you click on it, it'll go right here and then you can scroll through it. And this one didn't need a lot of work, but you know, it was older, it had older cabinets, you know, older bathrooms. So an investor probably bought this house because it, it looks like it needs work. And let's say that one didn't need to work. Go to the next one. There's no pictures on that one. Go to the next one. Okay, look at this. It's boarded up. Whole house looks like it's leaning over. There's no trim. There's a lot of drywall damage. So this house needed a substantial amount of work. So if you have a house in this area, whoever bought this property is probably a tremendous buyer for you. So what that looks like is you want to go to your auditor, whatever auditor you have in your city and your county, you want to go to that. So this address is 699 Seymour Ave. So you go to your auditor, type in the address that's sold and Silver Rose Holdings purchased this property two months ago. 
Um, so I'm trying to figure out who Silver Rose Holdings is because I want them to buy my house. So a little secret, usually the states, if you, if you type in state of your state, state of Ohio LLC name search, it'll bring up a search where you can search them. So if I go in here, I can actually search this name. So Silver Rose Holdings, I'm typing that name in right here, go to search. It'll give you the name of the person who created the, and this might be an attorney, um, but sometimes it's the buyers. So I'm Googling James A. Gregory to find out who he is, where I can find him, how I can get in contact with him, because I wanna call and ask him, say, hey man, I saw you bought a property on Seymour for $49,000. I got a house that's either way bigger than that and a way better condition for $60,000, or I got a house that's pretty similar condition for $40,000, less than what you paid it for. Are you interested in another opportunity? So you wanna pitch these deals to these people. When you have a deal in an area, you wanna to go to Redfin, you wanna search for other uh, people in the area that are buying houses, then you wanna find the name of that person. So go through all these things, see if there's a phone number there. Go to Facebook, type in James A. Gregory in Dublin, Ohio. See if he pops up. Start messaging all the James A. Gregory's here in the city. Say, hey, did you buy a house at 699 Seymour Avenue? So you wanna get in front of as many people as possible. But most importantly, you can skip trace it. So we use TLO.com to skip trace, but you can Google skip tracing services and then services will come up. So you go to Redfin, find houses that have sold, look at the address, see who bought it, call those people, because those are real buyers here buying today. So that's another great way of building your email list is finding buyers that are currently buying today. And what you can do with that is once you get interest from them, get their email address or their phone number, which you already have because you called them and then call them on future opportunities or get their email address and ask them if you can send them future opportunities. So that's another great way of building your email list um, is by cold calling people that are actually buying in the area. Number three, the third way that we've had a lot of success um, is going to local real estate meetups. Go to those and network with people. Don't go and stand in the corner and hide. Go there and ask who's still buying real estate. A lot of these places um, will allow you to sell your deal on stage. They'll allow you to go up on stage and say, hey, I have a wholesale opportunity at 123 East Main Street. I got a printout, I got pictures, here's the numbers. If you're interested, let me know. So go to real estate investor associations, try and pitch your deals to build your buyers list. Again, you wanna be collecting email addresses, you wanna be building relationships. If you're not pitching, be out there actually networking, shake hands with people. Hey, you know, what are you doing real estate? Hey, what are you doing real estate? Hey, what are you doing real estate? Find the buyers to add to your email list. Another one is sheriff sale. If, you're, if your county has a uh, in-person sheriff sale, um, like ours used to be in person every Friday, now it's online. But when it was in person, when you buy a sheriff sale, you have to buy with cash. So you have to have money. And these people are buying sight unseen most of the time. So these are serious buyers that know what they're doing. So you wanna to go to those places and network with them and ask them, they're obviously buying. If they're bidding, they're trying to buy a property. So afterwards, talk to them, go up and meet them. Say, hey, you know, I saw you bid on a property, 123 is Main Street. You know, can I send you other opportunities that are in the same area as that? Build relationships. So share sales, great. One that I've had a lot of success with when I drive around the city, um, wherever I'm going, if I'm you know going with my girl, if I'm uh, going to dinner, if I'm doing real estate, wherever I'm going, if I see a house that's being renovated currently, I'll walk into the property and I'll ask who owns the property. Usually it's contractors there, but they can usually put you in contact with the owner of the property. And those people are buyers. They're doing work on the property. They bought the house. Those are the people you want to communicate with. And lastly, the sixth way is by doing JV deals. So if you're brand new to the game, you get a smoking deal and you haven't had time to build a buyer's list and you need to get a property sold ASAP, call other investors, call other wholesalers in your area that have been in the business for a long time. They probably already have a buyer's list. So call them and say, hey, I got this property 123 East Main Street. Here's the pictures. I got it at 50 grand. Do you think you would have a buyer at 60 grand? And then we can split the fee $5,000 a piece. Um, usually those people can sell the deal because again, they've been in the business, they know the buyers, they've spent the time building a buyer's list. So work with others to build your buyer's list, learn the process, build the buyer's list, everything like that. But again, the goal here is to build a list uh, of real buyers, people that are actually buying. A lot of people will say they're buying, but they can't. So real buyers, build an email list and a phone numbers. So as soon as you get a deal, 
you can blast it to your you know 200 buyers on your email list and you can pick up the phone and call your top 10 buyers and email it to them yo i just sent you an email hey i just sent you an email i think this would be a great deal hey i just sent you an email i think this would really be a really good opportunity for you to get as much uh, engagement on the property as possible to try and sell the property as quickly as possible and if it's a smoking deal and you email people and call people and then get them to walk the house you can even call for highest and best. So if you're selling it at 60 and 10 people want the deal, somebody may offer you 63 or 65 or $70,000 for the same house. The more real, real buyers that you can have and that you can have in your, uh, in your Rolodex, the quicker you'll be able to sell properties and the higher price you'll be able to sell the properties. If you meet one buyer, like we met a buyer that bought, I don't know, 30 or 40 houses from us last year. That one connection made us hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. But if we didn't spend the time building those relationships, we wouldn't have made that opportunity. So go out there, build your buyers list, Facebook, cold calling, networking at other real estate investor associations, go to the sheriff sale, walk into other rehabs and network with other wholesalers in your area that you can joint venture with. So that's how you build a buyer's list and that's how you're gonna start making more money. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit the like button below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below. If you got any questions or if anything didn't make sense, if you need any clarification, drop a comment and I'll get back to you to, uh, to answer everything. Appreciate you guys being here. Peace.